Once upon a time, there was a girl. And she had such beautiful and long hair that everyone who saw her could not take their eyes off. The strands were so light, just golden. Therefore, they called her Goldilocks. For all her beauty, she was a very naughty little girl. Mom always allowed her to walk in the yard, but ordered her not to go into the woods behind their house. Goldilocks was very interested to know what is in that forest. And so, while Mother did not see, she somehow left the house into the forest. The girl walked for a long time in the forest. Either he finds a berry, then looks at a beautiful flower, then listens to how the birds sing. So she got lost in the forest. And suddenly she saw an unusual house in a clearing. Goldilocks approached him quietly. I walked around but did not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but no one answered. Then she knocked harder, and the door opened itself. Goldilocks entered cautiously. Three bears lived in that house. One bear was dad big and shaggy. The other was a mother bear. It was smaller. The third was a little bear. The bears were not at home because they had gone for a walk in the woods. The girl entered the room and saw three bowls of porridge on the table. The first bowl, the biggest one, was the daddy bear. The second bowl, the smaller one, was the mother bear, and the third, the smallest, was the bear cub. Near each bowl lay a spoon, large, medium, and small. Goldilocks was so hungry that she first wanted to eat from a large bowl. She took the largest spoon, took the porridge, tasted it, but the porridge was too hot. Then she took a medium spoon, took the porridge, tasted it, but the porridge was too cold. Finally, she took a small spoon and tasted the porridge from the small bowl. This porridge was neither hot nor cold just right. And Goldilocks ate all the porridge from the little bowl. After eating, the girl wanted to sit and saw three chairs near the stove, one large, another smaller, and the third, very small, with a little red pillow. First, she tried to climb into the largest chair, but could not. Then the girl tried to sit on the middle chair, but it was very hard and uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest chair, and it was just right for her. Goldilocks liked the chair so much that she began to swing on it. The chair cracked, broke, and she fell to the floor. The girl got up and went to another room. There were three beds, large, medium, and small. First, Goldilocks climbed onto the first bed, but it was too high and hard. I lay down on the middle one it was too spacious and soft. The girl lay down on the third, smallest bed. She was just right for her. Goldilocks felt so comfortable and cozy that she quickly fell asleep. The girl was fast asleep when the bear family returned home. The bears got very hungry and immediately went to the table. Seeing his bowl, Papa Bear got really angry. Someone was eating my porridge. He growled. The bear mother also looked into her bowl and growled less loudly. Someone was eating from my bowl too. And the bear cub, seeing his empty bowl, cried loudly. Someone didn't just eat from my bowl, he ate all my porridge. The bear smelled something was wrong, left the table, and began to look around. Daddy Bear noticed that someone moved his chair and growled in a terrible voice. Someone was sitting on my chair. The bear mother looked at her chair and complained. Someone was sitting on my chair and moved it from its place. And then, the bear looked at his broken chair and again cried loudly. Someone did not just sit on my chair, but broke it. All three bears went cautiously into the bedroom. Someone was lying on my bed and crumpled it. Papa Bear roared in a terrible voice. And someone was lying on my bed too and crumpled it, growled the mother bear. 
The teddy bear looked at his bed and cried again. Someone was lying on my bed. And then he saw the girl and squealed in a thin voice and still sleeps in her. Dad and mom bears came to the bed and saw that a little girl was sleeping there. Goldilocks woke up from the cry of a bear cub and was very frightened there were three bears in front of her. She instantly jumped out of the house and ran wherever her eyes looked, without looking back. The girl ran for a long time, she was very tired, and then she saw her mother, who was looking for her missing daughter in the forest. Since then, Goldilocks always listened to her mother and did nothing without her permission. She became a very obedient, kind, and good girl. A long time ago, a beautiful princess lived in a large castle. And then one day her father gave her a golden balloon for her birthday. The princess liked the gift so much that she spent all her time with it. On one of these days, the girl went out to play with a ball in the garden. But having played, she did not notice how she ended up near the pond. The princess threw the ball up and tried to catch it. But he slipped out of her hands, rolled on the grass and fell straight into the pond. No, no. The princess tried to get the ball, but it was at the very bottom. Then the girl had no choice but to sit by the pond and cry bitterly. But then a noise was heard from the grass. The princess looked back and saw a frog in front of her. She looked at the girl and asked why the princess was crying. The girl was very surprised to see a talking frog and told her how she dropped the ball into the water. The frog listened attentively, jumped around the pond and invited the girl to return the ball. But in return she asked to fulfill one request to make friends with the frog and take her to the palace. After a short okay. thought, the princess agreed. <laughs> then the frog jumped into the water and disappeared from sight. Soon she appeared with a golden ball and threw it to the princess. Having received her gift back, the princess happily ran to the palace. Then the frog reminded the girl of their agreement. But the princess just laughed and said that such an ugly frog could not live in a palace. So, the girl left the frog and returned to the castle. In the evening, the king, queen and princess gathered for dinner. But as soon as they started eating, they heard a knock at the door. Then the butler entered the room and announced that a frog was sitting at the threshold. She asks permission to enter and claims that she was invited by the princess. The king looked sternly at his daughter. And the princess told him about everything that happened in the morning by the pond. The father thought about it and then said that if the princess promised something, she should keep her word. Then the okay. king ordered the butler to let the frog in. The door opened and a small frog entered the castle. In several leaps, she found herself at the table. The frog then bowed to the king and thanked him for allowing her to enter. After that, the frog jumped to the princess's plate. The king ordered a saucer to be brought to the guest. But the frog stopped him and said that he could eat from the princess's plate. The girl was beside herself with rage. But she didn't show it, hoping that after supper the frog would leave the palace. However, when the princess got up from the table, the frog followed her. And after a while, the guest wanted to sleep. The princess offered her a guest room. But the frog said that it wants to sleep in the girl's bed. And the princess, fearing to disappoint her father, agreed. Then the frog jumped onto the king's bed and rested its head on the soft pillow. And the princess had to lie down next to her. In the morning, the frog woke the girl up and said that she had a last wish after which she would definitely leave. And the heart of the princess was filled with hope. The frog paused, looked into the girl's eyes, and then asked to kiss her frog lips. The princess jumped out of bed in a rage and flatly refused to kiss the nasty frog. And the guest, hearing this, wept bitterly. Suddenly the princess felt so sorry for the poor frog that she had no choice but to kiss her. As soon as the princess did this, a bright light lit up the room. 
A moment later, when the light went out, in front of her was no longer a frog, but a handsome prince. He said that once an evil witch put a curse on him. And to break the spell, he needed to spend the day with the princess and get a kiss from her. The astonished princess was happy. They went to the king together and then got married. And they lived happily ever after. And the princess never again judged people by their appearance.